we will not be interrogating terrorists using that approach. That approach is now prohibited. In short, I released these memos because there was no overriding reason to protect them. and the ensuing debate has helped the American people better understand. How these interrogation methods came to be authorized and used. On the other hand, I recently opposed the release of certain photographs that were taken of detainees by you as personnel between 2002 and 2004 individuals who violated standards of behavior. In these photos have been investigated and they have been held accountable. There was and is no debate as to whether what is reflected in those photos is wrong. Nothing has been concealed to absolve perpetrators of crimes. However, it was my judgment informed by my national security team that releasing these photos would inflame anti-American opinion and allow our enemies to paint US troops with a broad damning, and inaccurate brush, thereby endangering them in theaters of war. In short, there is a clear and compelling reason to not release these particular photos. There are nearly 200,000 Americans who are serving in harm's way. And I have a solemn responsibility for their safety as Commander-in-Chief. Nothing would be gained by the release of these photos that matters. More than the lives of our young men and women serving in harm's way. Now, in the press's mind and in some of the public's mind, these two cases are contradictory. They are not to me.
in each of these cases. I had to strike the right balance between transparency and national security. And this balance brings with it a precious responsibility. There's no doubt that the American people have seen this balance tested over the last several years. In the images from Abu Ghraib and the brutal interrogation techniques made public long before I was president. The American people learned of actions taken in their name. that bear no resemblance to the ideals that generations of Americans have fought for. And whether it was the run-up to the Iraq War or the revelation of secret programs, Americans often felt like part of the story had been unnecessarily withheld from them. And that caused suspicion to build up. And that leads to a thirst for accountability. I understand that. I ran for president promising transparency, and I meant what I said. And that's why, whenever possible, my administration will make all information available. to the American people so that they can make informed judgments and hold us accountable. But I have never argued and I never will that our most Sensitive national security matters should simply be an open book. I will never abandon and will vigorously defend the necessity of classification to defend our troops at war. to protect sources and methods, and to safeguard confidential actions that keep the American people safe. Here's the difference though, whenever we cannot release certain information to the public for valid national security reasons.
I will insist that there is oversight of my actions by Congress or by the courts. We're currently launching a review of current policies by all those agencies responsible for the classification of documents to determine where reforms are possible. and to assure that the other branches of government will be in a position to review executive branch decisions on these matters. Because in our system of checks and balances, Someone must always watch over the watchers especially when it comes to sensitive administration information. Now, along these same lines, my administration is also confronting. Challenges to what is known as the state secrets privilege. This is a doctrine that allows the government to challenge legal cases involving secret. Programs. It's been used by many past presidents Republican and Democrat for many decades. And while this principle is absolutely necessary in some circumstances to protect national security, I am concerned that it has been overused. It is also currently the subject of a wide range of lawsuits. So let me lay out some principles here. We must not protect information merely because it reveals. The violation of a law or embarrassment to the government. And that's why my administration is nearing completion of a thorough review of this practice. And we plan to embrace several principles for reform. We will apply a stricter legal test to material that can be protected under the state secrets privilege. We will not assert the privilege in court without first following our own formal process.
including review by a Justice Department committee and the personal approval of the Attorney General. And each year we will voluntarily report to Congress when we have invoked the privilege and why because. As I said before, there must be proper oversight over our actions. On all these matters related to the disclosure of sensitive information. I wish I could say that there was some simple formula out there to be had. There is not. These often involve tough calls, involve competing concerns, and they require a surgical approach. But the common thread that runs through all of my decisions is simple. We will safeguard what we must to protect the American people. But we will also ensure the accountability and oversight that is the hallmark of our constitutional system. I will never hide the truth because it's uncomfortable. I will deal with Congress and the courts as co-equal branches of government. I will tell the American people what I know and don't know. And when I release something publicly or keep something secret, I will tell you why. Now, in all the areas that I've discussed today. The policies that I proposed represent a new direction from the last eight years. To protect the American people and our values, we've banned enhanced interrogation techniques. We are closing the prison at Guantanamo. We are reforming military commissions, and we will pursue a new legal regime to detain terrorists. We are declassifying more information and embracing more oversight of our actions. And we're narrowing our use of the state secrets privilege.
these are dramatic changes that will put our approach to national security on a surer. safer, and more sustainable footing. Their implementation will take time, but they will get done. There's a core principle that we will apply to all of our actions. Even as we clean up the mess at Guantanamo, we will constantly re-evaluate our approach. Subject our decisions to review from other branches of government, as well as the public. We seek the strongest and most sustainable legal framework for addressing these issues in the long term not to serve immediate politics, but to do what's right over the long term. By doing that we can leave behind a legacy that outlasts my administration. My presidency, that endures for the next president and the president after that a legacy. that protects the American people and enjoys a broad legitimacy at home and abroad. Now, this is what I mean when I say that we need to focus on the future. I recognize that many still have a strong desire to focus on the past. When it comes to actions of the last eight years, passions are high. Some Americans are angry, others want to refight debates that have been settled. In some cases debates that they have lost. I know that these debates lead directly, in some cases. to a call for a fuller accounting, perhaps through an independent commission. I've opposed the creation of such a commission because I believe that our Existing democratic institutions are strong enough to deliver accountability. The Congress can review abuses of our values.
and there are ongoing inquiries by the Congress into matters like enhanced interrogation techniques. The Department of Justice and our courts can work through and punish any violations of our laws or miscarriages of justice. It's no secret there is a tendency in Washington to spend our time pointing fingers at one another. And it's no secret that our media culture feeds the impulse that lead to a good fight and good copy. But nothing will contribute more than that than a extended relitigation of the last eight years. Already, we've seen how that kind of effort only leads those in Washington to different sides to laying blame. It can distract us from focusing our time, our efforts, and our politics on the challenges of the future. We see that, above all, in the recent debate how the recent debate has obscured the truth and sends people into opposite and absolutist ends. On the one side of the spectrum, there are those who make little allowance for the unique challenges posed by terrorism. and would almost never put national security over transparency. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are those who embrace a view that can be summarized in two words, anything goes. Their arguments suggest that the ends of fighting terrorism can be used to justify any means. And that the president should have blanket authority to do whatever he wants. provided it is a president with whom they agree. Both sides may be sincere in their views, but neither side is right. The American people are not absolutist, and they don't elect us to impose a rigid ideology on our problems.
they know that we need not sacrifice our security for our values, nor sacrifice our values for our security. So long as we approach difficult questions with honesty and care and a dose of common sense. That, after all, is the unique genius of America. That's the challenge laid down by our Constitution. That has been the source of our strength through the ages. That's what makes the United States of America different as a nation.